hats off to Chelsea Manning as one of the, well, she's a truth teller and the courage is, I mean, you can't beat her courage. I mean, here she is six years in, in jail, treated horribly in jail. She gets the, the commutation from Obama. Uh, when she came out of jail, she, she wasn't even hesitant to criticize Obama. Uh, she could have easily just skipped that one, given the, what, what would be apparently a precarious position that she's in. Um, I'm looking at her statement, at Chelsea's statement. I will not comply with this or any other grand jury imprisoning me for my refusal to answer questions only subjects me to additional punishment for my repeatedly stated ethical objections to the grand jury system. Uh, she also said earlier that she was standing in solidarity with other activists. And she also made the point that the grand jury actually has nothing to learn from her, nothing. Everything that could be learned uh, about what Chelsea Manning knows was learned uh, in 2013. Uh, I mean, there was a exhaustive questioning at the, at the court martial. All the documents are there. She went to prison for it. But what's remarkable, Joe, is this, that you know, we hear a lot, we hear a lot about journalists are being subjected to possible criminal penalties for not revealing their sources. But Chelsea Manning in this case is the source and she's going to, to prison for not reporting on the journalist who covered the story that she released and which everybody knew about. I mean, it's so bizarre. It's so absurd on its face. Uh, but again, just hats off to Chelsea Manning in terms of standing up for, for what's right. You know, if everybody did what Chelsea Manning did today, uh, the problems that we're all encountering would actually be taken care of because the people who control the instruments of state coercion and repression, and in fact, the people who control the, the, the opinion molding that constitutes the dominant narrative in society, justifying the institutions of state repression, they're a tiny minority. We, the people, and I'm saying that, you know, with full sense of what that means. We have the power if we're strong, if we're mobilized, if we decide to act like we have the power. And, and that's what Chelsea did. Chelsea acted like we, the people, should have the power to stand up and be ethical and be principled. And if everybody did what she did, we would win because we are the majority, the vast majority. And the instruments of repression are, are really controlled by a very, very, very tiny elite. It's really about whether or not um, whether or not people stand up, whether they lose their fear and stand up. And, and that's why I think it's an inspiration what happened today, even though it's also a gross, terrible injustice. But if we, the people, exercise that power, then we'd have a democracy. Can't exactly. have that. Can't have that. Yeah. I mean, like there would be nothing more revolutionary than actually being a, a democratic place because it would require almost a uh, revolution to, to exercise that democracy. So yeah, I agree with you. Now, I think it's interesting is that she cited her first, fourth and sixth amendment rights in refusing to speak to the grand jury. And the sixth amendment one really caught my attention because that is the part of the constitution that gives Americans the absolute right for a jury by trial and a public trial and a defense. Now, she, when she was questioned during her court martial, she had uh, a defense. Uh, it was a trial where in this case, in a grand jury, she's being asked the same question she was asked under the conditions of the Sixth Amendment in a secret setting mm. where there is no defense, where there is no public, where, where what is said in that room is absolute secrecy, cannot be repeated anywhere, even though stuff is often leaked from a grand jury that is not supposed to be made public. So they, they appear to be trying to get her in a setting where she could be railroaded into saying something or, or manipulated in a way that there, there's no uh, light shown on how that was being done and no defense attorney there to advise her. That's very uh, uh, troubling situation, which is I think the essence of why she refused 
to testify. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, you know, I because of where I come from in the progressive movement, I was an activist and an organizer since I've been 15 years old, and that was during the Vietnam War. And I was there and my parents were in the civil rights movement. And, you know, all of us who are of this age know how the grand jury system was used to entrap and imprison hundreds of core organizers in the movement. I mean, hundreds, I'm not joking. And it was done over and over and over again. And at a certain point, people just decided they were gonna stop cooperating with the grand jury system as she has done. And that meant you, that you went to jail because if you didn't cooperate, if they grant you immunity and you don't cooperate, they, they hit you with contempt and they put you in jail for the duration of the grand jury, that's 18 months, but a grand jury can be renewed and it's routinely renewed. So the 18 can be 36, um, it can go on and on. And again, no due process, you're just there. A judge has decided you're in contempt uh, because you don't wanna go along with the kangaroo court or you don't wanna name names. You know, once you're there, you can't like, invoke the Fifth Amendment after you've answered some questions. You can't say, well, I'll, I'm going to selectively decide what to answer or not. So it's just like the HUAC hearings. It's just like the House of Un-American Activities Committee, the witch hunt, the star chamber, where if they ask you a question, uh, Brian, uh, do you know Lee Stranahan, for instance? And I decide, well, I don't want to talk about Lee Stranahan because is not relevant to what's going on here. And they're looking, they're just on a fishing expedition. I say, I don't want to talk about that. You're in contempt. You're in contempt. So you're, you're, um, it's a, it's not just a slippery slope. It's, it's the road to hell. And again, all the power is lodged in the state. The grand jury was original, you know, all of us as kids learned the grand jury was a way to sort of limit government power to stop arbitrary uh, arrest and detention. In fact, it's just the opposite. Well, a more extreme example would be some of the generals in Latin America during the 70s and 80s when they would find the, uh, a telephone book of someone and they would torture them to get information about other people, uh, throw them out of airplanes. If you didn't want to cooperate with their investigation to widen their net uh, of people they were bringing in. So that's what you're saying, basically. They're using intimidation to try to get you to to rat on other people and throw you in jail if you don't. Brian, did you have anything you wanted to add about the possibility that Chelsea Manning could be in prison for you know almost an indefinite period of time? Um, sadly, I think that's that's true. Um, you know, the grand juries go on and on. I, I mean, there's lots of examples of it that people forget about. During at the beginning of the Clinton administration in '93. Right beforehand, the, the Whitewater investigation began in earnest. And that grand jury was renewed over and over again. Friends of the Clintons who, who refused to cooperate, and they said it was a vast right-wing conspiracy, um, they stayed in jail for multiple, through multiple 18-month cycles of grand juries. So yes, I mean, uh, there's lots of precedent for this. And again, it's, you know, we, we put, we put the, the, people running grand juries on a pedestal. And that's kind of what Joe, what you were saying is that there's an, uh, there's an assumption that because uh, they're in charge of the grand jury, that they're, that they're somehow like, they're beyond questioning in terms of what their motives and tactics are. That, uh, that it's like, it's justice itself incarnated in these people. When in fact, the grand jury is just a, it's a tool of sort of limitless power over individuals. Uh, and it's used by people who know that they themselves will pay no price. They don't have to prove anything. They don't have to prove anything. But if you resist, you can be incarcerated for up to 18 months and then it will be renewed. I think it's very likely it will be renewed until they've succeeded in the, in the real function of the grand jury, which is to arrest Julian Assange. Um, they're not, it's not going to stop. And, um, and that's the reality. So again, hats off to, uh, to Chelsea Manning for extraordinary bravery. I mean, really, I mean, we have to think, here we are, we're all on a vigil right now. 
we're taking some number of minutes or hours to do something that's good. At this moment, at this very moment, we have Julian Assange basically incarcerated in the Ecuadorian embassy and now Chelsea Manning imprisoned for what might be a considerable length of time. And these folks, these folks are enduring a lot of hardship and they're doing it because they are truth tellers and because they are brave souls. And um, I really, I, I really, you know, in addition to having an objective faculty about what's going on and analyzing and assessing uh, on an emotional level, on a human level, uh, you know, I think it's, I just think it's hard to overstate the debt all of us have to these very, very strong, courageous people. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I think that's a great point, a really fantastic point that, you know, we're committing, you know, a few hours or minutes to this vigil and yet we're free and we are not being, you know, we're not experiencing what Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange are experiencing right now. I think it's hard to um, overstate the importance of that point for sure. I, I just received a, a statement from James Cogan of the Socialist Equality Party of Australia. He said, quote, the Trump administration's imprisonment of Chelsea Manning for refusing to give false testimony against WikiLeaks and Julian Assange is an outrage. She has suffered more than enough for her courage and service to the truth. American democracy rolls in the gutter and is rapidly descending into the sewer of dictatorship. The working class everywhere must come to Chelsea's defense and take up the demand for immediate release of Assange and all persecuted uh, class war, criminal, war prisoners. The SEP in Australia will be redoubling our effort to secure Julian's immediate return to his country with full protection, and we will be joining all international action to fight the immediate res restoration of Chelsea Manning's freedom. And that is, again, from James Cogan of the Socialist Equality Party, and he is the Social Equ Equality Party uh, National Secretary, and that was obviously sent to us today on March 9th, uh, 2019.